The Word of Faith Netcast is on the air. Well, praise the Lord. This is Dr. Bill Bailey, and this is the Word of Faith Netcast. Glad you join us once again this week. We're going to get into the Word of God uh, and pick up where we left off last time. Before we do that, though, I have something I want to share with you uh, about our website. We have recently d- uh, done some tremendous improvements to the website, and I think the best way to show you what some of these improvements are, rather than just kind of casually talk about them, is to actually show you right here on the netcast. Now, what I want to show you today is our new uh, website. It's not exactly new. It's pretty much the same design that it has been. However, um, and you can see my cursor here, uh, we, I want to show you some of the features of the website and some of the things that we have added and changed uh, very recently. One of the big things you'll notice is that over here we have the YouTube channel uh, icon. If you click on that, you'll actually be taken to our YouTube channel. <clears throat> and uh, this will actually start playing, so I'm going to pause that. But at any rate, uh, we have a full channel here uh, of information and netcasts. We recently were upgraded to where we can uh, have the entire netcast uploaded in its entirety, full 30 minutes, as opposed to having to break it up into two parts like we used to. So, excuse me, that's pretty exciting. And then also I want to show you a little bit about some of the navigation features of the website. If I scroll down here, you'll notice we have the Word of Faith Radio uh, uh, widget, I guess you'd call it here, where you can click on and play Word of Faith Radio. Uh, You can keep scrolling down, and you'll notice that we have uh, posts on the site for Christian resources, teaching articles and messages, and of course our video netcasts since we started publishing them through uh, the new method that we have. You can also see the most recent posts. So, for instance, the last netcast before this one, 187, uh, is available here. And, of course, we have faith links and uh, so forth here. But let me go back up to the top so that the very first thing you see over here is our latest Word of Faith netcast. If you click on this image, it will take you to the most recent netcast. Now, obviously, this is the most recent since the one that you're watching right now, which will be uh, 188, this is uh, the last one, 187. And if you scroll down here, this is what I wanted you to see. This is what we, one of the things we have changed. We now have the audio available for the netcast. We have the M4V uh, video, which would be your iPod video. But that video can also be played on a PC, like a, uh, a, a Windows media file. And what we've done is we've eliminated the Windows Media File version, that WMV version of the file. It was just taking a lot of extra time to produce. And since this file can be viewed on a regular PC, there really wasn't any reason to keep producing that Windows Media File. And then, of course, we have the Flash video uh, file, which is what we use to play uh, the actual netcast here. So if you play from here, you'll notice the netcast will start up, same as it does on YouTube. And uh, you can actually watch the video netcast right here online without having to download it, without having you know extra hassle in terms of downloading it. I'll go ahead and pause it there. Uh, so one thing I would encourage you to do is, you notice here on the website we have this little plus one. That's a Google plus one. If you click that, uh, you will be essentially acknowledging that you like the website. So if you could go to our home page, let me go there, and then on the home page click on the plus one to essentially, same as Facebook, like our site. Now you say, well why is that important? Well it's important in this sense. The more folks that click on the fact that they like our website, the higher our ratings will be, uh, if you want to look at it that way, on YouTube. And that will help us get uh, noticed more frequently in the search engines and therefore will uh, bring more people to the website. And I think that's 
uh, a really ben a beneficial thing as far as um, getting the word out, getting the word of faith out to the world. Amen. All right, let's keep going here. Notice uh, here at the top, we have information, contact us, what we believe. I think it's really important to look at the what we believe page because this will tell you not only what we believe here at Word of Faith Ministries, and it's very detailed, but it also has a lot of scripture and a lot of uh, information for study. So, um, you know, you can look up all of these scriptures. You can basically do a whole study of the Word of God based on our What We Believe page. So I think that's a neglected page on our website, but that people really could take advantage of that. Now, about the ministry is pretty much the first page that you see when you come to the website. And then, of course, there's one uh, about my background. Uh, there's a, a button here which recently somebody took advantage of, and I really appreciate that. Uh, recently, and that was the the donate button. You can actually donate to Word of Faith Ministries right over the internet, and of course, we also have our ministry address down here. Something I don't mention too often is a lot of people may wonder about our ministry address, P.O. Box five two one three. I looked up five two one three. There's only one scripture in the Bible that is has a chapter fifty two and a verse thirteen, and I thought it was kind of neat because it's Isaiah fifty two thirteen. Behold, my servant shall deal wisely and shall prosper. He shall be exalted and extolled and shall stand very high. Praise God. I thought that was that was a good confession over the ministry. So I think that uh, makes our uh, mailing address kind of neat. So I just thought I'd share that with you. But if you want to click here to donate, that will actually take you through uh, a PayPal donation feature. And you can use um, MasterCard, Visa, American Express, all the different major cards uh, to donate and we really really appreciate any donations to the ministry. Uh, ministry history is interesting in that you can go back and look at all of our our old, uh, I shouldn't say old, archived video netcast, our uh, faith articles from way back, even our print newsletters that go all the way back to September of 1979. Uh, let me just pick one randomly here, July of 1980. We'll see what that one is. This is the actual print newsletter that was sent out. And then this is the article that was published in that newsletter, the main article, which is Why Speak in Tongues. So again, this is something that a lot of people aren't familiar with, but that they can go back and, and see what the ministry was like back in the, you know, 30 years ago time frame. Uh, and uh, basically still glean from the articles that we have out there. Now watch our netcast. This is a this is definitely changed. This is new and improved. We have taken our speakfaith.tv project and we have kind of morphed it <laughs> into our video archive for the ministry. So now you can literally go from the scroll bar here and scroll down all the way back to our very first video netcast netcast number 100 and if you scroll back up we'll just uh, I don't know we'll just pick one kind of at random here here is uh, 176 it says Dr. Bill looks at John 14 1 through 4 and discusses Jesus unique statement that uh, only he is he is the only way to God I should correct that uh, he is the only way to God I kind of miswrote it <laughs> at any rate I'll fix it uh, but if you then click on that, it will take you to that netcast, netcast number 176. And then once you click play, it will actually start playing that particular netcast so that you can watch it. So uh, this is something that I'm, I'm really excited about because, and I'll go back on to our home page here, uh, but that allows you to go back and listen to and watch all of our netcast all the way back to the very first one. Uh, without them kind of getting lost in the uh, the web, so to speak. Uh, you can also listen to our netcast. We have the ability to where you can scroll down and listen to our most recent uh, audio versions of the video netcast. And then um, you can also listen to our radio broadcast and to our messages. Now this is kind of different the way I have it listed here. These are our messages that are archived in audio format they're out there on the web 
but I have them listed by date and by the topic. So you got to get out of the boat, which was taught in May uh, at Faith and Victory Church. You can click here to listen to it online. And uh, let me just do that. If I click it, it will actually start up a player and it will start playing. Of course, I have the audio turned off, but it will start playing that message. You got to get out of the boat. Now, the same thing here, if you right click, use your right mouse button, right click here and save the link as, it will actually save the, uh, of course, it'll save it as the name of the message, but it will save it to your local PC. And that way, <clears throat> excuse me, you can uh, uh, save it, you can put it on a MP3 player, whatever you want to do there to listen to the message. So I'd encourage you to go back. And one thing I, I should mention about these, let me scroll down. You know, we've got them all the way back to the 1980s uh, and all the way up through to the more recent messages. And we're adding those older messages in there as I get opportunity to convert them from uh, tape to MP3. So uh, that's an ongoing process. Now articles, we have a lot of articles out there that you can check out uh, that I'd encourage you to, to, to look into. And then another one that I really want to mention here and, and draw some attention to is this subscribe to our newsletter. If you click that and enter your email address uh, and, and click on the subscribe button, which is off the screen at the moment, uh, then, actually no it wasn't, I think it was, yeah it's there, okay, uh, I missed it. But click on the subscribe button after you fill in your email it will confirm that that's what you want to do is join our mailing list by sending you an email. It's important that you respond back to that email and then that way you'll be on our email list and we can send you out notifications about upcoming uh, new netcasts and so forth and I think that'll be a blessing as well. Another thing that again is neglected very often is this searches all of our Word of Faith websites up here at the top. So if you, whoops, clicked on the wrong button. If you uh, if you were to type in let's say faith and confession that'd be a good phrase and we search it what you'll find is is that it will bring up not only articles from the Word of Faith ministry website it'll bring up articles from our hyperfaith.org uh, blog website and uh, speakfaith.com which is another website that we have so all of our websites can be referenced through this Word of Faith Ministries website search engine it covers all of our sites so uh, that's a neat feature it's one that's very unusual because it will search not only this website but all the websites that we have and of course you know we do have hyperfaith.org we have speakfaith.com we have uh, speakfaith.tv uh, all the different websites that we're using to reach the world with the gospel so I just wanted to encourage you to check these things out uh, and be aware that you're part of this ministry by going out and sharing about our website you help spread the gospel to the world people there friends of yours family members people all over the country literally all over the world can get onto the word of faith ministries website wofm.org as it says right here wofm.org i'd encourage you to check that out now let's get into the word uh, from last week where we left off we were talking about 2 Timothy chapter 2. We began in verse 15, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And we talked about those who wrongly divide the word of truth. There are people who are misquoting scripture, misusing scripture, applying scripture in ways that take it out of context. You know the old classic example <laughs> that a lot of folks use is that if you take scriptures out of context and put them in a certain order you can make it say just about anything you want so for instance there's a scripture that says Judas went and hung himself there's another that says uh, what thou seest go and do quickly <laughs> you know well 
go ye and do likewise. You know, all these different kinds of things. You can splice it together to make it say anything. And, of course, that's not what it means. That's not what <laughs> you ought to do. shouldn't go hang yourself. shouldn't kill yourself. You should get in the Word of God, and you should rightly divide the Word of Truth. Now, what does it mean to rightly divide? Well, that means reading Scripture within context, doing study. That's why I like to get into the Greek. I like to dig in there, find out what the actual meaning of the original words are, and then that helps you understand the Scripture and rightly divide the Word. Amen? So you can do it correctly. Unfortunately, there are plenty of people that are helpful in a bad way to help you misunderstand it verse 16 says but shun profane and vain babblings for they will increase unto more ungodliness their word will eat as doth a canker of whom is Hymenus and Philetus who concerning the truth have erred they have made a mistake they're in error saying that the resurrection is past already and overthrow the faith of some and as I said last time this is the part as a teacher of the Word of God that really concerns me are those that are overthrowing the faith of someone else. You know, Jesus said that if one offends these little ones, these young Christians, then it's better that a millstone be tied around their neck and they be cast into the sea than be one of those that offends or disturbs or overthrows the faith of young, immature Christians. My trust is that if you are a mature Christian, if you are uh, one who studies the Word on a regular basis for yourself and digs into these things and are sensitive to the Holy Spirit who is really the teacher of the church anyway, then you will be aware of some of these false doctrines that are out there. Nevertheless, the foundation is verse 19. The foundation of God standeth sure, having the seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. And that's one thing that I take a lot of comfort in. There's a lot of people out there saying they speak for God. There's a lot of people out there that are saying we have the truth and we are teaching the truth. But you know God knows who are His. And I believe that believers that are sensitive to the Holy Spirit, they know others that are like-minded and of like precious faith. Amen? And so you need to be, you need to choose carefully those that you listen to. Meticulous is a good word. I was looking for a word. You need to watch and listen and pay attention to what people are teaching and just because it sounds all gooey and syrupy and lovely and wonderful doesn't necessarily mean it's what you need to hear to grow. As a matter of fact sometimes what you need to hear are some things that might oh, be hard to hear and yet you know it's the truth of the Word of God. Amen? All right, let's keep reading here. Um, Nevertheless, the foundation of God stands sure, having the seal. The Lord knoweth them that are his, and let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. But in a great house there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, some to honor, some to dishonor. In other words, there are some people who are teaching the pure Word of God, man. They are laying it out there, and they are right on. There are others that are kind of, yeah, <laughs> You know, I can think of a few denominations. Bless their darling hearts. They're teaching what they know. They're getting people born again. But that's about it. Now, that's great. Don't get me wrong. That's wonderful. And that's probably the most important thing. But if you went to them to learn about the deep things of God, I'm sorry, they're just not teaching it. I'm not going to name any names, so don't put any words in my mouth. <laughs> but there are vessels that are honorable, golden vessels, and there are those that are eh, earthen vessels. But now what we said last week is important, and I kind of had to go over it quickly because we were running out of time. But that is that you decide whether you're a vessel of honor or dishonor. Did you know that? See, a lot of people think, oh, Dr. Bill, I'm just a, I'm just a vessel of dishonor. I'm just an old earthen pot. I'm a mud pot. <laughs> and, and that's all I'll ever be. No, wait a minute. That's not what it says. It says, there are some to honor and some to dishonor. What does it say in verse 21? If a man therefore purge himself, that's your choice. 
If you purge yourself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor. So what determines whether you're a vessel unto honor? If you purge yourself from these false doctrines. Amen? So stay away from the false doctrine. Get into the pure word of God. Then you will be a vessel unto honor. Sanctified and meet for the master's use and prepared for every good work. Well, that's what I want to be. Amen? As a believer, I want to be a vessel unto honor. I want to be sanctified. That's a word that means set apart unto God. I want to be meet or able to be used to the master and prepared for every good work. Now let's read that out of the Amplified. Verse 21. So whoever cleanses himself from what is ignoble and unclean and who separates himself from contact and contaminating and corrupting influences. Amen will then himself be a vessel set apart and useful for honorable and noble purposes, consecrated and profitable to the master, fit and ready for any good work. I like that. Amen. But notice it's your decision. It's your choice. You're the one that's going to have to do it. Now here's another thing. You can't do it for somebody else. This is an individual decision. You can help people. You can teach people. You can minister the Word of God to people, but it's their choice whether they're going to get with the program. Amen? And there are people, you may have a minister that you dearly love, but if he squirrels off, that's a term I like to use, you know, squirrels off gets all squirrely. You know, my pastor Ed Taylor says uh, granola Christians. Granola Christians are flakes and nuts all packed together into one thing. That's a granola Christian. <laughs> well, they squirrel out. They get squirrely. And what are you going to do? There's nothing you can do other than minister the word to them, share the truth of the word with them, pray for them, praise God, amen, intercede in the Holy Ghost. But that's all you can do. You can't consecrate them unto a good work yourself. They have to do it for themselves. Now, ultimately, yes, the blood of Jesus is what cleanses us from all sin. Amen. But it's your decision what you do with yourself. You are a spirit. You have a soul. You live in a physical body. You, the human spirit, determines what your mind thinks, and you, the human spirit, determines what your body does. And if you're letting your mind take control and run off with your body, you're going to squirrel out. Okay? That's just plain old straight talk, but it's the truth. All right. I'm going to read the rest of this out of the Amplify because I believe it will be uh, a real blessing for you. Let's uh, begin in verse 22. Shun youthful lusts and flee from them, and aim at and pursue righteousness, all that is virtuous and good, right living. Did you know we're called by the word of God to live right? I know that comes as a shock <laughs> to a lot of the greasy grace crowd. You know who the greasy grace crowd is, right? Those are the ones that are preaching, oh, we're under grace, we don't have to go to church, we don't have to tithe, we don't have to do what God wants us to do. We can sin all day long, and we can just enjoy our youthful lusts, and we're born again, we're going to heaven, we got our ticket punched, we're okay. That's the greasy grace crowd. And that greasy grace teaching is becoming more and more popular. But you know what the Word of God says? It says you've got to live right. Why? Because it honors God. Because you're consecrated unto God. You got to live right to go to heaven, Brother Bill? No, I didn't say that. Getting born again, going to heaven, that is entirely a decision you make when you receive Jesus as your Lord and believe God raised him from the dead and you're born again. But you know what? You need to honor God in this life. That's what it says. Oh, Dr. Bill, that's bondage. No, it's word. Come on, folks. All right, I'm going to keep reading here. Oh, boy, I'm, I'm, some people getting all rankled and mad at me. That's okay. You ought to have right living. Conformity to the will of God. Ooh, listen to this. Conformity to the will of God in thought, in word, and in deed. 
Mm. <laughs> right living and conforming to the will of God in your thought life, in your words that you speak out of your mouth, and in your deeds, that's how you live. I like it. And aim at and pursue. I like this. Aim at. Set your direction. Aim at and pursue faith, love, and peace, harmony and concord with others, in fellowship with all Christians who call the uh, upon the Lord out of a pure heart. Now, you don't have to fellowship with squirrels or granola Christians, but you do fellowship and stay in harmony and concord with all those who call upon the Lord out of a pure heart. But refuse, verse 23, but refuse, shut your mind against, and have nothing to do with. I like that one too. Trifling, ill-informed, unedifying, and stupid controversies. <laughs> Woo! Amen. I like it. Trifling, ill-informed, unedifying, and stupid controversies over ignorant questions. For you know that they foster strife and breed quarrels. <laughs> I really like that verse of scripture out of the Amplified. You ought to print that out and put it on your refrigerator. <laughs> Refuse, shut your mind against, have nothing to do with, trifling, ill-informed, unedifying, stupid controversies over ignorant questions. For you know they do foster strife and breed quarrels. Amen. <laughs> And the servant of the Lord must not be quarrelsome, verse 24, fighting and contending. Instead, he must be kindly to everyone and mild-tempered. Preserving the bond of peace, he must be a skilled and suitable teacher. Hallelujah. Patient and forbearing and willing to suffer wrong. Now, I was talking about people getting all kind of bent out of shape with me earlier for something I said. Well, there you go. That's what I got to be. I got to not be quarrelsome, not fighting and contending, kindly toward everyone, mild tempered, preserving the bond of peace, and skilled and suitable teacher, patient and forbearing and willing to suffer wrong. Amen. I like that because that's, that's what we should be shooting for as believers. Not just those of us that are teachers of the word, but believers need to be doing this. All right, verse 25, he must correct his opponents with courtesy and gentleness in the hope that God may grant that they will repent and come to the truth. And listen to this. This is the amplification here. That they will perceive and recognize and become accurately acquainted with and acknowledge it or the truth. That they will perceive, understand, recognize, and become accurately acquainted with and acknowledge the truth of the Word of God. Amen. Verse 26, and that they may come to their senses. <laughs> and escape out of the snare of the devil, having been held captive by him henceforth uh, to do his will. Or in other words, that they'll pull themselves out of the snare of the devil and be able to do the will of God. Amen. As I said last week, it's important to realize they're the ones that pull themselves out of the snare of the devil. They have to make a choice to hear and receive and believe the Word of God. I'm glad we took a little time to read that out of the Amplified because there's some good stuff in there, praise God. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Well, we're out of time. Going to have to probably pick up with a new topic next week. But uh, in the meantime, you can write me here at Word of Faith Ministries. Our address is Word of Faith Ministries, P.O. Box 5213-5213, High Point, North Carolina, the zip code 27262. As you see it there on the screen. And as usual, you can also write me at my email address. My email address is drbill, D-R-B-I-L-L, -L, at W-O-F-M dot O-R-G. Join us again next time. Remember, until then, to fulfill the Word of God.
The Word of Faith Netcast is brought to you by Word of Faith Ministries and our partners around the world. 